Good afternoon and welcome. So this afternoon I've prepared a talk involving Python turtle graphics, which we, we use to make the dragon picture for the t-shirt. So I've left it running in the background. I think it takes at least 10 minutes or so. It definitely wasn't time to do that in a lightning talk. Throughout this afternoon, I shall be using Python turtle graphics in order to demonstrate a variety of different machine learning techniques, which seems entirely appropriate, of course. We're going to look at hill climbing, which is quite a basic algorithm that's really easy to get your head around. And then a few things that go slightly wrong. So we'll move on to try simulated annealing, spot a particle swarm optimization. For those of you who know any machine learning algorithms, you might be able to help me out to work out what sort of parameters I should really have used to make sure these work every time rather than just occasionally. And for people who don't know some, any machine learning, you'll go away knowing some of the basics of how quite a few different things really work. It's frequently do something random, then loop for a while and hope it gets a bit better. So <laughs> keep it nice and simple. Um, we can extend the hill climbing into more complicated techniques like gradient descent. And you need the techniques like this to form neural networks. So I'll give you a two minute overview of what a basic feed forward neural network is. Couldn't work out how to try and visualize that using Python turtle graphics, so yeah, whoops. And of course, they're paper bags all the way through the talk. What's the point of the hill climbing or gradient descent or particle swarm optimization and these other optimization techniques? Really simple. If I've got a function, f of x or x1, x2, x3, as many x's as you want, and I want it to be zero, what x do I need? That's all, and in fact, that's what neural networks are trying to do, and all kinds of things, this crops up loads. So that's optimizing. Or maybe you just want to make it as small as possible, or as big as possible, but you're trying to find the right inputs for a function, see what happens. So we ran through some ways of doing this in a workshop with Chris earlier on, and he was written about this Java framework for optimizing an overload, so you can check that out. There are different ways of measuring how close you've got. There's not gonna be time this afternoon to go through all of these, but I'll keep it nice and simple, and the paper bags make it really easy, so we don't need to worry too much about that, but just be aware that's quite a complicated subject if you're trying to do something real. Paper bags are real, so don't panic. Why turtle graphics? Anyone remember the logo programming language? Kevlin was talking about how old some of the stuff is that we keep rediscovering. And I only recently discovered that there's the so-called turtle graphics in Python recently. So yes, very exciting. The original ones were actual robot that moved around and drew a pen line. Wow, robots. And Seymour Papert was the guy who designed this logo programming language. I, he was instrumental in moving on from perceptrons, there's quite a small basic building block, to full-blown neural networks. I wrote a seminal book a long time ago. So it's entirely keep in keeping that a talk about AI and machine learning uses Python turtle graphics. The obvious thing to do. So, okay. We, we need to know about these turtles and we want a paper bag. If you import turtle, you get a turtle. If you don't know Python, don't worry, you, it's easy enough to follow what's happening. And turtle graphics are available in other languages. If he, he starts and he's pointing to the right, so you can move him through 90 degrees right, then he'll go down and forward, goes 70 steps forward, then move him left to come along the bottom of the bag, forward, left, done. And a note to myself to do a demo here, I think. We, we know what's going to happen. There's my dragon still going. Where have I put it? 
Hey, paperback, good. That was nice and easy, ready to go. Very important to be able to code your way out of a paper bag if you're going to claim to be a good programmer. Of course. Anyone had a go at coding their way out of a paper bag? <laughs> I have, once or twice. <laughs> so we've drawn a paper bag. So you could just put the turtle somewhere and just make him go forwards. You know, you'd definitely get out. <laughs> That's slightly boring, though. He can move to a variety of different points, bimble around, and eventually definitely get out, as long as we throw in a few clues. We could draw some L systems, we could draw the dragon curve, and eventually it might end up outside the paper bag. We could draw some trees and other recursive structures, but I'm not brave enough to try recursion on Saturday afternoon. We might not stop, so let's iterate instead. <laughs> mentioned that I kicked off the dragon earlier, so if you get the slides, you can draw your own dragon too. I'm sure I nicked the code off the internet and the link is somewhere in the notes. So if we iterate instead, it's much less to go wrong. So anyone come across spar angles before? Just really simple idea. It's like a spiral, but we're just gonna do straight lines. So this one's going forward, turning, forward, turning. If you do a bigger step and turn, and a bigger step and turn, we're using a heuristic of taking bigger steps each time, machine learning turn, heuristic. It's bound to eventually get out of the bag. Well, it doesn't have to be a square. The angle you turn through is going to affect the shape you make. So I think this, the shortest amount of code I've come out with so far to code your way out of a paper bag Starts in the middle, our turtle, that we get for free, so default turtle. And we just need to go round, taking a bigger step each time, as we turn through 120 degrees on the outside, we're doing the right amount to make triangle shapes on the inside. I could do a demo of this as well. Wrong prompt. Paper bag. Turtle escaping. Hey! <laughs> if anyone wants to have a go at that whilst they're here, we've got some spare certificates that you can claim afterwards. <laughs> this, usually when I program my way out of a paper bag and given the talk, someone's always asked, how did you get into the bag in the first place? It's not a joke, but if you can think of a good punchline, let me know. Ah, lots of ways. Right? You can give a talk next year and do a demo. <laughs> on... <laughs> exactly. So, I'm, as I said, I want to look at some hill climbing, some simulated annealing, and some particle swarms today, and then mention some other things later on. There won't be time to go through those. The bag I introduced originally the edges are vertical, which doesn't play very nicely with trying to do some mathematics. If I want to optimize a function, one fundamental property of a mathematical function is I send in one value, or a vector of values, and I expect one value back out. The height, the y coordinate on the edges of the bag, so for the same x coordinate, might be one of many things which is just far too confusing for this point on a Saturday. <laughs> so I'm going to have slight variations of shapes of paper bags throughout the talk, which is actually going to make my life really hard because then I need to do the harder things than hill climbing to get in the bag. So that's nearly rectangular, it's just kind of stretched a bit, but it, I've now got my mathematical function that one x value, how far across we go, gives me one y value. So that makes things simpler. What's a hill climbing or hill walking or hill descending turtle do? Well, we've got our bag. He starts somewhere and he considers going left. He goes, nope, that's uphill, don't like that. He considers going right and goes, ah, this might get me into the bag, I'm going this way. 
And as I said, there was usually some kind of wild leap or fall leap in most machine learning <coughs> stuff. This isn't technically machine learning, it's a mathematical technique, but edges are blurred. So he considers left, he considers right, and if they both look worse, and in this case, worse means going uphill, he wants to go down, he wants to get in the bag, he wants to go to sleep. So he'll only go down. If he can't go down, he goes, falls asleep where he is. Quite a simple I'll go. And you can see that if he started on the left, he would gradually go right. I was to put less than equals when he's going right. He'll go all the way along the bottom, curl up in the corner, then he can sleep. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> How big a step is he going to consider? Oh, this is called the learning rate in machine learning. It's a meta-parameter. That means you've got to figure it out yourself and spend ages experimenting, doing science, or just guess, or evoke some more machine learning on that to work out what parameters to use to and then it ends up with turtles all the way down, but we haven't got time for that. Yeah, well, I said watch eight bag. All the bags in this talk are making some assumptions about Euclidean geometry. If our turtle were confronted with something like this, and went, oh, that's down, yeah, that's down, he's never going to get to sleep. So there are lots of domains in which these things don't work very well. Ah, right, let's see. does it work? He's going to consider left, consider right. Will he get in the bag? He should do. Uh, wrong one again. Slightly slanty bag. It's nearly rectangular, but it made it mathematical. And he's off, and he's off, and he's off, and... There's no better point at this point. He's happy. I can go off piece slightly. I, the bag doesn't have to be rectangular. It doesn't have to be brown either. This is an underdefined problem. So. so we can make a quadratic curve. It's just our function f of x. And it just happens we're aiming for zero or some point. We want the lowest at this point. Success. So it says step size. Suppose we just have a corner of a paper bag or modulus function, as you might call it in mathematics. If the paper bag goes from minus 10 to plus 10, and the turtle does a step of 20, That's at the same height. And then he's stuck. So I said you had to choose the step size carefully, or we get some potential oscillations. If, I did a, if he did a step of 10, and he started on the left, he'd end up right in the middle. That'd be OK. If he does a step of 3, he won't quite make it. And a step either way would be up. So the step size you choose can cause problems. Well, we can see him getting stuck if we want. Oops. Being turtle graphics, he's just going to go a few pixels at a time. So he'll just do 20 and then go, then have a look. So, but he, he's not got it in the bag, so we need to choose our parameters more carefully. Or we'll use a slightly better algorithm. What happens if we have crazy shaped paper bags now? Could happen if we crumpled it up slightly. So if I take five times cos x, take, a, take away x, it's giving me a downward trajectory. I want to bound this so it fits on the screen. Because that just keeps going down, so they're more minima off screen. This time the turtle's going to start on the left. He doesn't have to start on the left. If he starts on the left, 
It'll hopefully go down, 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 down. Either, either the other two directions are up. Great, found the lowest point. This is what we know in the trade as a local minima. There's a much better point that'd be much quieter, just further along if you're just willing to make that little extra bit of effort. You could tell that was going to happen by just looking at it. But that's why using turtle graphics to explain maths and machine learning is good, because you can work out what's going to happen. He's missed out on the better spot. This is dreadful. We did find a, a lower point. So it might work for some things, but there's somewhere better. What are we going to do if they if we just use the cosine curve, the two equally good points, we know what the turtle's going to do here. Again, he's going to get, he's going to go fight done as soon as he finds one point that's a local minima, which we can see in action. No surprise that happened, really, right? I hope. What's he done wrong? He's been a greedy turtle. He's weighed up what appears to be better and always gone for the best place. Well, I've been encouraging him to go right, so. Right, he's gone. How could you avoid this? Well, he, he's been quite myopic, though, and that's to do with the learning rate. He is looking where he's stepping, but he wants to look at the things he's stepping at, but he wants to be able to see something off further than where... He, yeah, so he needs, to, he needs to look or... Yeah. He needs to go further. Yeah, he needs to go further. But then does he keep going? When does he stop? Ah, oh, is the being greedy is a problem, but yet yeah, this just try, try left or try right. Works for some things, but not everything. We could do the maths on the curves we've got to work out where the minima are, which I'd quite like doing, but you'd probably all get bored. And there's some cases where you, you haven't got a mathematical function, and a nice paper bag to get into or out of, you've got something a bit more complicated. So if, if you can't describe it mathematically, you certainly can't find a minimum of it. Even if you can describe something mathematically, it might be intractable, so you might not be able to find the minimum. You could brute force it. I could try every single possible point along that curve on the screen. But in some cases, there are quite a lot of points, and we definitely wouldn't have time for that. Some nice halfway house is try some deterministic things. And then just throw something random in the mix once in a while. And a large number of evolutionary computing methods, machine learning methods, AI methods, the names are all a bit fuzzy as to what's what. Just throw something random in the mix as well. That gives you a chance to try a few other things. So we're going to try some random stuff next. I mentioned about the evolutionary computing and this cropping up loads. So we're going to try some simulated annealing which is really like hill climbing. Executive summary, we try left, we try right, and we try something random, which is like you looking somewhere else as well. So it's just thrown a bit more into the mix. And then we'll look at particle swarms as well, which are combining some randomness with some what they've discovered so far, and they get a whole swarm of turtles. I don't think that's the right collective now, but it had to do. So, simulated annealing, loads of machine learning stuff just nicks an idea from another area and repurposes it and doesn't actually do the official thing properly, just nicks bits of it. So, actual annealing, if you hit metal with a hammer, apparently, I've never done any metal work in my life, it can get quite brittle and snap. If you heat it up a bit, 
And you start changing the layout of the crystal structure inside. And then it, you can, it's more ductile, you can move it around more. So it's kind of heat things up and slowly cool them down, randomly moves things around inside, which can be modelled with the Boltzmann distribution, which is e to the mumble something or other about thermodynamics or bacteria, <laughs> divided by the temperature. So we're going to nick the e to the mumble mumble divided by t and go, yeah, we're doing simulated annealing. <laughs> That's controlling how, mu how much things get jumbled up randomly. As the temperature cools, less jumbling happens. So we can try right, we can try left, and we try something random, but we're less likely to do the random thing over time, and then we settle down somewhere. Hopefully in the global minima, rather than just the first place that looked okay. So, machine learning algorithm, remarkably like the hill climbing one, almost Python, not quite. So, try left, try right, and we might try something random. If the left or right's better, yes, we'll still be greedy. You don't have to do that. There's always different options at this point. But the way I've implemented it is I'll consider right, I'll consider left. If it's better, I'm doing it. If it's not, then I might do something random. Maybe. Need to unpack how we're going to implement the maybe function. Well, we said as the temperature decreases, I want to make this less likely. And we know the Boltzmann distribution with the e to the mumble mumble divided by temperature works in actual annealing. So we're going to nick that, get it in. We want bad values to be less likely. I don't want to, it to be highly likely I wang off and try something completely random. I want it to be slightly less likely, especially really bad ones. I want them to be possible, but if it's a bit less likely, I'll make it a bit more likely to be picked. It's almost like water. Probability. Who knows what a probability is? Is saying a number between naught and one? Good enough? Yeah. So we want a function that gives us a number between naught and one. Ah, we can do higher mathematics. Great. And then we can just pick another random number. And if we get above our transition probability using science, then we do the random thing. So we just want to look at some way of looking at the cost of the old value and this new random value, which doesn't look that much, that it isn't better, but we're considering it. Divide it by the temperature, because this is science, we're using a Boltzmann distribution. It's bound to work. And just a reminder, we said we want probability, we want something between naught and one. If we take the cost of the current value, which for our paper bag problem is just the y coordinate, we want it to be as low as possible. That's really why we're going into a paper bag, because otherwise I would have had to flip things around and got the minus signs wrong. So, but you could flip it around and use this to get out of a paper bag as well. Just exercise for the listener. But see how much worse it is? I'm looking at E of some negative numbers, which is conveniently between 0 and 1. Probability tick. If you think about what happens as you decrease the temperature of this negative value, you're making it less likely to pick something that's worse. So if that was a fixed value of worse, you could see what would happen as you change the temperature. And we can set this up so as, if the new value is actually better, we definitely pick it, probability of one. And then using the cost of how much worse it is, if it's really much worse, two instead of 1.5, we're less likely to pick it. Sounds like we know what to do. So, algorithm, for a while, I said there'd be some kind of while loop somewhere. Yeah, we need to think about what we can do with that. How long for? First, Herschel just went, right, pfft, no point anymore, I'm on strike. Now we need to think about more parameters. It's going to get worse later on. What I've done, which is wrong, but it's really easy. Well, it's not wrong, it nearly works. I start at 10. Decrease linearly, so just take away. 
until I get down to naught, because I don't want to do mumble mumble divided by naught, because you don't want to do that when you're coding things up, right? That's not a good idea, so got lucky there. When I hit naught, I'm going to change my learning parameter. I'm going to make the step sizes smaller. And then they'll probably converge somewhere, almost certainly, perhaps, might work. You can, you can multiply things down instead. If you've got a really complicated problem, you probably want to start doing some maths to work out the cooling scheme you want. We're just going to do takeaway. It's easier. So that's a for a while bit. We know we're going to go right or left, or maybe somewhere completely different. Yeah, the maybe somewhere completely different needs a bit of thought, but just pick a random number. Maybe a Gaussian one, so it's more likely to be close and less likely to be far away. Or up to you, experiment, see what happens. And then if it's better than before, so we were looking at the cost of this. Well, you need a cost function. Well, as I said, we could just look at the y coordinate of the potential step and anything that's lower is better. If you want him to go out bag, you want to do greater than instead of less than. So if the temperatures drop to zero or below, we're not jumping anymore, just to make sure it settles down somewhere, otherwise we'll be here forever, possibly. If the new place I'm trying, be that left, right, or random, is better. Yeah, well, I'm going to be greedy here. You don't have to do that. Like I tried it both ways around, and I can't remember what happened. So try it out yourselves. Or else we're going to use the Boltzmann mumble mumble divided by t, and it'll be good. Function a little bit more complicated than the hill climbing, but not much. If the temperature's gone below zero, shrink the step size. Apart from that, I'm going to try left write something random. As I said, Gaussian, other random number distributions are available. And then I'm going to weigh these up and decide which ones are good. Keep track of the best ones so far so that I can report them after I've explored and just yield where I've tried next. And then the turtle will draw, draw where he goes to. Decrease the temperature each time around the loop. My stopping criteria is once it's hit minus five, that's far too cold. I've had enough of this. The new ones are just checking we've actually got something possible, which fortuitously always seems to work, but I've always tried left or right, so there's bound to be at least one in there. And then if it's better, I'm dimming it. If it's not, I need to invoke my e to the mumble mumble over t, where mumble mumble's just the y coordinate. And then I can demonstrate it with the turtle graphics. And we've got several things. Can he do the slanty bag? It's possibly more important to see if he can do the cosine one. Render dragon. That took ages. Let's get rid of the dragon. So. Caps not quite a bad idea. So this is jolly well work. It might take a bit longer because he's possibly randomly jumping around once in a while. And there's no guarantee he's going to end up in the far corner this time because I was just using the height of things. I cheated slightly with the hill climbing, gave him an imperative to go right so he ended in the corner. But it's frozen now because the temperature got low enough and he's having a little hibernation thing. I don't think that's actually biologically correct. I don't know about this kind of thing. I don't think he's really an actual turtle. I don't think that's really a paper bag. But he works for the simple case, so that's good. Let's, let's do the sloopy coat sign. Nearly, but not quite. Feedback there. 
he might not get the lowest dip. He sometimes does. Yeah, he's, he's, go on, go on, go on! <sighs> Stupid turtle, I shouldn't have let him be greedy, I think that's what I've done. <sighs> Sometimes works. Hey! You're lucky you can see something. It took me a while to go, I really need to bound the edges of these, because otherwise you tend to just go off the screen. So. <laughs> if he gets in one of these two, that's good enough. I've started them on the left each time. You can of course just choose a random starting point, and that's another decision you've got to make when you're using an algorithm. And I'm no good at decisions, so. He's determined to stay on the left this afternoon. Fine. So, yeah, there were lots of decisions, and I said, am I greedy or not? I don't know. I needed to know where to start. There were choices on the cooling scheme. As I said, there's some complicated things you can do if you're doing hard problems, really interesting math stuff if you're into that. It might not work, yeah, we just saw that, great. And in real life, you can actually do the maths, you probably should, this is for demonstration purposes, only no turtles have been hurt so far, good. And uh, there's several nice walkthroughs on the internet that I'll show you in a bit more detail than I've had the chance to do this afternoon. But it's a cool little algo, it's really like the hill climb, you just try left, try right, try something random. But the trick is like minimising the chance of trying something completely random if it's much worse. And making sure you converge, otherwise your turtle will just wind backwards and forwards forever. So the cosine function, several minima. What's the obvious thing to do if you've got several minima? Where do they start? Noodle around with this a bit, and I'm sorry, the equidistant turtles, but if you try random turtles, it tends to work as well. Now you, could, you can see that they're getting less and less random and jumpy around over time, which was one of our requirements, so. <laughs> Oi! I said if it's less than, it's better. Come on. In lots of machine learning algorithms, you get problems like this, and the slightly serious point, which I'll probably remake later on the slide, I've just forgotten which order my slides are in. There's a thing called niching methods in machine learning, where you can have like a few doing this and a few doing that, and actually try and encourage to keep, keep little cliques or niches so that they will explore more and not end up all getting stuck in the same place. So if you see niching methods in some literature, just think, several turtles. <laughs> you need to do a bit more control than I've done over mine to try and keep the niches slightly separate, otherwise it makes a horrible black mess all over the screen. Oh well, you get the idea though. Good, good. Right, now we've had several turtles doing the simulated annealing. The next obvious step to do is to have a swarm of turtles, yes. So, try and use a swarm algorithm, which I wrote up for Overload a while ago. That was using JavaScript and getting blobs out of a paper bag. Now we're going to get turtles into some of the aforementioned paper bags. How does it work? 
Well, we initialize our particles, or in this case, turtles, randomly, as a lot of these things do, and we've got a loop. So we're getting a hang of machine learning then, great. We're going to have an overall global best position. We just get the turtles to report back where they are, and then we can keep track of the best ones so far. But to avoid, like our first turtle, getting stuck in the local dip, we'll end up with several turtles moving around, so they'll report back, show us where they are, then they'll move, and each turtle will keep track of their own best position so far, and that's going to dictate how they move. There are loads of variants of this algorithm, so you can either update the turtles one at a time, and kind of asynchronously, or you can just do them in batch mode, synchronously. All these machine learning algorithms, you can just put things in slightly different places and come out with a swanky word and you've invented a new algo, and it may or may not work. So what's the move do? A particle, or in this case, turtle's got momentum. Oh, feedback. Which we'll represent as a velocity. So if he's got an X position at the moment, and I decide to see where he is one unit of time later. We just add the velocity to the current x position. Get the next x position. I could do the same with y, z. I can, this extends to n dimensional things, which I have trouble drawing the paper bags for, so we won't go there. And then you want to update the velocity. The velocity is going to carry the information about the best global position. I'm sure I've got a pointy thing on this. So we've got a best global position here. <coughs> and then each turtle's got its own best personal position. So you just work out, well, I was going this way. That's the, that's the first velocity part, times by the weight. So it's the current velocity, like it's momentum. It's aiming here, and yet pulled towards personal best, a little bit, and pull towards the global best, a little bit. So over time, they might all start swarming together, and they might actually get in one of the lower dips in the bag, might. We've thrown in some random numbers, so we weight these with some weight, some other pre-chosen weight, some other pre-chosen weight, so that you can say, if you make W this first magic number, bigger, it will tend to, that will dominate it, it tend to go on the trajectory it's on. If you make the weight for the personal best bigger, then each turtle is going to tend to go towards their own personal best, which might work for some things, might not. And of course, the bigger you make the weight for the global best, the more likely they are to all start swarming together more quickly. So now I've got three parameters to choose, as well as how many turtles, as well as where to start them. So, so I've probably definitely got this completely wrong and they don't always work. Lots of machine learning algorithms need lots of parameters and you need to play around with them and see what happens. So we're gonna have a particle or a turtle, but I didn't want to have a class called turtle because when I imported turtle, I'd get a heart attack. Turtles all the way down again. I'll start a turtle off at an X position, then I can work out a Y position because he is going to walk along the paper bag rather than wander off, hopefully. We're going to give it a random velocity to begin with. So each of the turtles just go off and do their own thing, see what happens initially. Give them a name in case I wanted to see what had gone horribly wrong, or maybe keep a history of where they went in case something went horribly wrong. And then we initialize however many turtles randomly. As I mentioned once or twice, we might want a minimum and maximum. Otherwise, if they start off the edges of the screen, we'll never see them. Not obligatory, but helpful here. So just build up a list of particles ready to go. Then the swarm happens, so built up our list of particles randomly, decided how many you want. Want to find the best, want to remember that. 
and then. I'll tell you where they are with the yield statement. And then find the best you can. I think it's probably, if I was thinking about this, I could have made the code a bit shorter and had less of a chat with Seb later on about how to make my code better. Update the velocity, which was just the weighting of the current trajectory, the best so far, and the best global position. And then make the path rules or turtles move. And it just for, well, another parameter. How long do we go for? I don't know. We we'll just pick a number out of the air. I'll call it epochs. That's quite typical in machine learning algorithms. Again, something else to experiment with. Find the best, it's quite obvious. I want to find the lowest down point. If I want to get out of a paper bag, what do I do? Find a higher point. If you're building a framework, you'd obviously send in some kind of comparator or something, but I want to go down, so we want the lowest point. The update velocity of a couple of random numbers and these values that we've pre chosen that. I've tried experimenting with and I didn't keep very good notes and I picked something that kind of sometimes works occasionally, but you can go away and play around with them and if you can tell me what works better, I'd be, I'd be really good. Well, the move is just clamping to the left and right of the paper bag so we don't go off the screen. And then I was keeping track of the history. And this is where the Turtles remembering the best position. Remember, we then bolt that in next time in the for loop to update the velocity that just gives it, it, it wants to go the best place so far. It's tired, it wants to go to sleep. It's also being pulled towards the global best. So these turtles will tend to move together depending on the numbers for the weights. And of course, we've got loads of different paper bags. So how many turtles do I have? What's going to happen if I just have one turtle? Yeah. Well, let's see. Quadratic paper bag, but why not? <laughs> kind of being torn towards where he, his best place so far was, which was where he is. And the global best place, which is kind of where he is. And <laughs> not really a swarm. So sometimes the more complicated algorithms aren't suitable. But using one for a swarm was probably not going to work. Two? <laughs> yeah, again, we're not giving them much chance to explore. If I tweak the weight slightly, I, I could have made the random part, the W weight, much bigger, and then they would have explored more. So but you've always got this interplay when you're doing particularly swarm algorithms. And I've, all kinds of other machine learning things between trying to explore loads versus focus down and see what's going on here. And so one and two, yeah. Ten? That's looking more hopeful. Turtles stuck up all the way down, but it's in a different dimension. You can't see that on the It's a projection of turtles. That's not the right collecting name either. Yeah, so playing around with all the parameters and things. You get the idea that you, you need enough of them, and then mm, I'm sure I haven't got the parameters perfect. Move on. One point about the 
swarm of one turtle, it's quite easy to work out in your head what you expect to happen. And trying to test some of these algorithms quite hard. But if you drop things down to noughts for loads of parameters, just one for the number of things, it makes it much easier to have one or two unit tests or something that run really quickly. You saw how quickly that first turtle stopped. So some sense that it's doing what you expect. If you can do the maths on the back of an envelope, you've got something to check, you probably should. So, yeah, kind of worked, kind of didn't, and sometimes the turtles are torn between like two places, and if you get the parameters wrong, they'll bang backwards and forwards for ages. Yeah, big discussion to be had about how you test this kind of code, but not time. So, all right, that's one dimensional paper bag. If we've got a three dimensional paper bag or a cone or something, instead of just hill walking, so then we're going right or left or east or west, that is another dimension. So now we can go north or south, which will make the C people start arguing even more about east, west, north, <laughs> south. So you can still just walk in one direction at a time, so you can still do the hill climbing. But you could combine the directions and go, well, east-west simultaneously would be daft, but you could go southeast or something like that and get somewhere more quickly. And this gives you gradient descent. Now, to do it properly, you probably want to start working out some maths or you can do some approximations see what happens. And there are loads of other ways of solving larger dimension problems. Quick recap on what a gradient is, what we can remind ourselves from the hill climbing we did just now. If the turtle were to go left, he can work out, oh, I would have gone up. I can divide how far up by how far across. That gives me an approximation of a gradient. That's going up, that's a positive number. But go the, if he goes the other way, as he steps across, he goes down. So I just say how far down by how far across. So that also gives me an approximation of the gradient. <laughs> so gradient's just kind of division, really. The trick is you make the, set, the step sideways really small to work out the actual official gradient, which you can do mathematically or with numerical approximation or but we're running out of time, you'll be pleased to know. So that's I'm not going to manage that now. As I said, hill climbing turtle is going to go one direction at a time. So we've got a three dimensional paper bag, oh, which will be amazing. Look down on top of it, or maybe it's a paper cone, but that's like a paper bag. Yeah? Look down on it, you can imagine uh, same levels drawn as circles. So that's what we're looking at and we can see the x direction and the y direction. Hill climbing turtles go one direction at a time. Gradient descent turtles, check the gradient. Overall and go straight down, doing crazy things like southeast or northwest, or which is just a linear combination, so some multiplying and adding. Why does this matter? There are loads of times we need to optimize stuff and particular thing which I cannot work out how to demonstrate with turtle graphics are for neural networks. As I said, we can do lots of approximation methods for these, we can do the maths properly, lots of ways of working out the gradient. Trouble with trying to divide by things that are really small steps either way is this so-called vanishing gradient problem. Think of it as divide by zero being quite likely if you're not really careful. So, as I said, right at the beginning, it might look nasty, but right at the beginning we said we want f of x, f of x to be zero. So all this neural network stuff, some of the simpler ones are doing really, is fitting a function to, well, instead of maybe one x, you might have two features, three features, or four. We're going to try and minimize something. And we're doing similar things. We start somewhere, and here we are, and we're going to step. Step size, learning rate parameter, 
And all right, we're using gradients here, but that's still like stepping left or stepping right. We've just done some maths to work out which direction we're going. That gives us a new number, and we keep doing it for a while. I said there was a to-do in my slides. I was going to try and write some code and demo something. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that in Turtle Graphics. So sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I mentioned neural networks. What is a neural network? Uh, it's a big question. There are lots of different types of neural networks, but quite a common one is a feed-forward neural network. It's just a function approximator, really. You're going, well, I've got some inputs, some x values, and I've got an output I want, or sometimes more than one. I want this output. I want you to put a function in between that takes, gets these inputs and gives me that exact same output. Well, at least the difference between the output you get and the output I wanted is, well, zero, that would be spot on, or as small as possible, which is what we've been doing all afternoon, so we can use some of these techniques. And the neural network's just that magic black box in the middle, and what they tend to do is they take all the inputs, multiply them by something, do some adding up, and then maybe do some crazy stuff with, like, tangents or exponential functions and you don't have to. And poof, then you can fit any new inputs and probably maybe the output will be close, maybe it won't, who knows. You work out this so function of inputs, gives you an output, neural network is some magic or mathematics to work out what that function is. So I've got an x1, an x2, an x3, some magic or maths happens in here, and it spits out a number. That's why these are called feed-forward neural networks. You put your inputs in, you feed them through your multiplying and adding up, and you get a number out the end. How do we get the magic in the middle right? Well, if we look closely at what we're doing with them, we'll tend each of the magic bits so let's zoom in on one of these, say the top one, and the bottom one will be similar. Send in all the inputs to this magic bit, which we'll do by saying we'll take that one or wait, just some number, which you could start with a random number, like we've done earlier on, and add a wait times the next one, and as many as you want. Add in some bias, that's just some hard-coded number that you pick at random, and I'm deeply amused by the fact that uh, AI algorithms got a bias node bolted in, but that's a key note from last year, I think. Well, now we've got a function that we've initialized randomly with these weights. Trouble is, the chance of getting the outputs you're after when you've done that first time is quite small. So you go left a bit, right a bit. You could try something random as well, so you could use a simulated annealing, or you could try and use some maths, or you could use a combination of both. And we feed these numbers back for a while. Then we go forward and go, Is, am I better yet? No, try again. Left a bit, right a bit, something random. Any better yet? In the loop. Until we get as close as we can to our training data. So then that gives you the going. Numbers go in, get an answer. Any good yet? Left a bit, all right. Back we go, tweak the weights, try again. So you've probably heard of feed-forward neural networks and back propagations. Just think turtles trying to go left a bit, right a bit. We're just trying to get as close as we can to something. There are lots of ways of doing the bit in the middle, so if you're interested, um, I think the C++ London series had a really interesting talk about how you can do some of this differentiation mathematically. I can't remember, I think he was possibly using some two different C++ libraries. There's some cool tricks in there, but that's, that's a three hour talk. I think he's managed to condense it all down to an hour, so do check that out if you're interested. See. I, I said I had a to-do there. But to show you what the turtles would be up to if I was trying to build a neural network from hand <coughs> would 
be a technical challenge or an excuse, if you will, and we are nearly out of time. I did find a beautiful um, Turtle graphics package for Java. All you need to do for the three-dimensional stuff as we're going on the screen is you want some shading to show the depth that you've got. But I couldn't find one I could get my head around in Python. So, And apparently, writing a turtle graphics package is a thing, along with writing your own logging framework and writing your own string <laughs> class. So if anyone would like a go at making me a Python or C++ or other language 3D library that isn't so completely crazily over-engineered as this one. And that's their own quote, so they're quite pleased with themselves. <laughs> that's it, really. Try it out yourself. We've, we've done a zoom through three different like, technical algos using turtle graphics hey, to demonstrate what's happening. Try it out. Try it on some different problems. The slider puzzle, so... You can fit nine tiles in, but you've only got eight, and you have to move them around and get them in order. It's a beautiful demonstration of how to use hill walking algos to make that work. You can apply this to more than just paper bags, that's the point. You could build up the neural network from scratch. I don't know about you, but I quite like building something myself. I feel like I understand it better. As we saw, it doesn't always necessarily work perfectly, but sometimes the turtles end up in the wrong place. But don't be afraid of the AI and machine learning things. Don't be afraid of anything new. Try it out. Loads of the machine learning AI stuff is something random and a loop. So look for that. And when you find that, you're halfway to figuring it out. Then it gets really complicated trying to get the parameters right and stuff. So, but you can understand some of this quite easily. You can have some fun. What have we learnt? Well, I've had some fun. I don't know if you have. I've been put, I've talked a few times about how to code you out of a paper bag, and I've pulled these all together into a book, which is in review phase at the moment. It's got a title. I wanted to call it Code Your Way Out of a Paper Bag. <sighs> There's some discussion about their types of titles. I've written down what it's called. It's quite long. I wonder if we change our mind. Let me see. Uh, hopefully, it'll be at least in beta by summertime, we shall see. Some of the things I've written up, I've done talks about before, so you just look on overload. I've found several bugs in the code as I've been writing it up. Recommend writing a book for making you hunt bugs in your code and refactor it so it fits nicely on a page. It's quite an interesting and time-consuming way to refactor, but makes you think, oh, here we go. Genetic algorithms and machine learning for programmers, colon, create AI models and evolve solutions. Or code your way out of a paper bag, as I like to think of it. Any questions? Anyone wants a certificate? To go away and have a go at the spar angles because I've got some left. And that's all I've got really. Russell did say, I think, aim for an hour and then if there were some questions. No? One. Did you have to write it by hand? So we did, in Java, some backend. Right, and what happens now? You've got scikit-learn libraries, R, and all kinds of other stuff that's free. Unlike, say, MATLAB, which did have some implementations, but they were really expensive, and you did it as a learning exercise. They're now free neural network implementations. Processing power's way quicker how long did your neural network take to train? Overnight. Nowadays, with more processing power, and that's why they're getting popular again, it'll be trained in minutes. An entire collection of pictures of cats and dogs, I'm going to tell you which one's a cat, in certainly won't take overnight. Some of it's processing power, 
And a lot of it is people who've implemented free libraries. These are a pain to implement, and you'll get them wrong. And even with the processing power, if you do it yourself, it'll probably still be quite slow. I, I think it's just processing power and free libraries, but doing this by hand is ridiculous, but loads of fun. Chris. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they haven't they, they haven't got the data either, but that's a different issue completely. Yeah. I mean <laughs> so uh, there were sources that are still available of data for machine learning algorithms. All come, some of you will have come across the Iris data set. You see, four types, uh, three types of Iris flowers with four descriptors. Loads of my algorithms just had one X value. And I alluded to how difficult it would be to do some turtle graphics for like X and Y values with the Z. Four ways to describe an RS flower. How big is that data set? 150 data points. So that was the kind of data 20, 30, 60 years ago. And now, whew, loads of data, big data stuff. But again, try it on some small data and some simple things with one or two dimensions. It's easier. Is that hand? Alan. Yeah. Mm. Isn't this an ideal problem for machine learning? <laughs> well, no, that was exactly my point, because I can apply some machine learning to this. Of course. <laughs> but that needs parameters. <laughs> <laughs> ah! So then, it's, it's turtles all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> if you try different machine learning algorithms to try things out, try things in parallel, there's some other algorithms that need fewer parameters. I'm getting quite interested in random forests at the moment, and they tend to just do something random. You might have to say how many trees you want in your forest, and that's about it, but you, I prefer things where I don't have to make choices. I'd like to go to a bar and there'd be Guinness or one dark ale, and then I don't have to think. It's, <laughs> don't get overwhelmed. Left or right? They're equidistant carrots, I can't choose, I don't know. You can start doing stuff like plot surfaces of what's happening and start doing some mathematics, actually, and that'll avoid the turtles all the way down for some problems, but not all. But you're quite right, that's, that's meta-parameter tuning with meta-machine learning algorithms with hyper, lots of meta and hyper going on. But you can, and people do that. It's an active research area. I, we don't really know yet, we'll just try it, see what happens. Any other questions? No? Anyone want a certificate? <laughs> uh, they are available. It means we can sleep off early and get an extra cup of tea. So when, when should we get the book? So it's kind of stalled in the review phase at the moment. They were talking about release being released in around June. I think it's going to be available on their website as uh, in an electronic format for beta early reviewers Does around summer. Okay. I'll try, I will still try. I, I just went, oh, pff, it's not <laughs> worth the argument. I think, I think it's got more buzzwords in it their way, which is a thing. But I'll let you know when it's published, but a lot of the stuff I put in there, we've already talked it through at the ACCU, but I have made several bug fixes when I looked and went, ah, where's the minus sign in there? Serves me right for only having one unit test round. It's only in zero. It's bound to be right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could get stickers as well. Yes. To... <laughs> Genius. Very good. That's it. I'll set the dragon off again. Unless we want to see some of the turtles again. These work.
Ten med djur, men det är bara en Or, or more like the slanty paper bag where we just end up in the wrong place, being like, <laughs> fine, whatever. Boom! 